You are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair on RLM Radio. The girl of your dreams has got to be in some bar. Sorry, boys and girls, but this is X-rated. So if you're under 18... Get out, God damn it! Get the point good. And now... Bend over. Y'all ready for this? We do it all night long. And now, your host, Grammy. Oh yeah, I am a believer. Thanks, Moosey. (laughs) And yes, I'm dealing with monkeys right now. So yeah, this is Grammy Mary. See, my brain has gone to grandbaby mush. (laughs) And they're not even babies anymore. They're, what is it, 13, uh, 12, and 10. And the 13-year-old will be um, 14 in just a couple of months. And it's like, yeah, they made me crazy, but I still love them, the little monkeys. (laughs) Oh, well, y'all are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair here on RealLibertyMedia.com, channel 3. Also on the RLMRadio.xyz site, the RLM TuneIn radio station, the RLM, um, what, yeah, Spreaker. There's lots of RLM and num num nums all over the place. And yeah, I'm a believer. And basically the main reason, well, besides the fact that I'm dealing with monkeys, have been since um, last Friday. Uh, <laughs> so now do you know why I'm a little on the crazy side? And... Uh, in any case, uh, I'll be dealing with them until I pass them off to their grandpa on Friday. And then I get them back on Monday. And then I pass them on again to mom on Tuesday. So, yeah, it's, uh, yee It has been a week so far. And nobody has shot anybody in the face with a bazooka. So, hey, bonus round. Bonus round. But, uh, yeah, um... My my grands are monkeys, and we just finished the third Shrek movie just before I went live. So that's kind of sort of, I went, oh yeah, I got to play that song. <laughs> and I, Moosey, I, I know it's going to sound crazy, but I liked Mickey. I mean, Davey was okay, but he was, I liked Mickey. I liked Mickey. Yeah, Kate, Davy died last year, I do believe. I think it was just last year, about this time, actually. Um, but yeah, I like Mickey Dolans. I for some dumb reason he's just goofy. And so I like goofy. So <laughs> in any case, let me say hey, 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 hey to everybody. Over here on Fakey Book. Uh not real sure what's going on over here on Fakey Book other than I'm getting a few messages, but thanks for the messages, guys. Appreciate it. Nobody else is really paying attention over here, but I do have something, a link that I got to get to here in just a little bit. Over here on this Affin site, thank you, Grimner, for sharing me over here. I truly do appreciate it. Who else is over here? I see Bobby Bain is over here, as well as Katie Troxel and the lovely Estrella, who is just a Sharon fiend. Let me tell you, that woman, she ferrets stuff out, and then she ain't one bit afraid. To express herself. Express yourself, good friend. Um, over here on Minds, I have no idea what's been going on on Minds because I really haven't been. I've been kind of busy. <laughs> Losing what few marbles I have left. But that's okay. It's okay. Um, I did see something yesterday. Please correct me if, if, if it was, you know, if it was a fake news kind of thing. But there was some kind of thing yesterday that I saw about uh, Congress calls for arrest warrant for Shitlery, and it was on truth is stranger than fiction. And I went, okay, somebody's messing with me. But oh damn, it was it was almost like a wet dream, not like it would happen. But you know, I kind of went, oh, how fun would this be? <laughs> not gonna happen. But you know what the hell. And any oh shit, and then I just refreshed mines, and there's Harry and yeah, Megan is that her name? I read somewhere that her wedding dress was 175 grand. What? 
the hell? Seriously, for a dress, you're only going to wear once. Jeez, people, talk about knowing how to splurge. Oh, well. Um, let's see, I've done Facebook, done Freedoms Network, done Minds. What's going on on Twitter? I've lost some suckers on Twitter. Darn it. Apparently, I have moved a little bit fast for them. Go figure. Either that or the F-bombs really bought. Oh, hey, I gained a couple more. I'm back to 408. I was down to 406 the other day. Thank you, Vinny, for tagging me in that Kansas article. Yeah, we is overachievers sometimes. Just got to say that. Um... <laughs> Yeah, I know, Grim. It sounds like bullshit to me, too, but one can always hope. <laughs> Davy died in 2012? Really? It's been that long ago? Holy crap, I thought it was just last year. Some bitch. Yeah, Bob Denver was quite a while ago. Hmm. And yeah, Gilligan's dead, too. Dang it. Dang it. Ooh, sweet, Moosey. Moosey gets off early on Friday. I do, too. I get a reprieve for a few days. <laughs> oh, my God. I am so glad I've already raised my children. I love my grandbabies to pieces. But I am ready to have my house back. Mm-hmm. Hi, Jabberwocky. You sleep well, sweetheart. And, uh, yeah, awake safe as well, darling. I see you over here on, on Twitter. And, uh, okay, so now I've done Twitter. I've done it, 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 it. Yeah, I know. you got to retrain me because it's been since last Wednesday. So now, over here in the RLM, which is where you need to be if you want to give me static. Those of you listening in on Spreaker, come on over to reallibertymedia.com. Click on Channel 3. Join the chat. Or just listen on Spreaker and just think of a nickname and join the chat over in Real Liberty Media because, yeah, I got not such great internet out here in the boonies. And so too many things going really messes with my flow, don't you know? So, okay. Uh, over here on the RLM right up top, Mr. Barman, the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world. Hey, Bar man, you just so awesome. You tweet me even when I don't know I need to be tweeted. I also see Grimner, the RLM God, is here, as well as the lovely Moose Girl, who gets off early on Friday. Booyah, bonus round, extra long weekend. The lovely Kate is also here, as well as Asmo and Beth Z. I saw you chitty chatting the other day, Beth Z. So awesome to see you back in the chat. Glad you're working out in your yard. My daughter posted a link on my Facebook the other day um, about weeds and how uh, this in this little cartoon says that it loves to pull weeds you know pulling the the top and getting the whole root and everything it's like ripping someone's head off with the spine attached and I was like yes <laughs> and your point is they all have names as well, don't you know? Especially those little stubborn buggers. Oh, yeah, I name every one of them. And it's usually someone in government that gets that lovely little, um, shall we say, honor? I think we shall. I also, ooh, Monday's a holiday. And you're going to a festival. Sweet, Moosey. Sweet. Okay, so is there not going to be, is there going to be a Balls to the Wall Friday or a Freaker's Ball or nada on both? Just got to put that out there. Find out what's going on. Oh, Rob works. Same, aw. Hugs to Rob on your mama. Oh, I can't, I, I know that day's coming and I ain't looking forward to it. Hey, Chalcedony, how you doing, hon? I also see Double Dip and a Chloe going on in the chat. I am here. Woohoo! Kind of, sort of, maybe, almost. Physically, at least. Mentally, we're not sure about. I have had grands since Friday. <laughs> I also see I be Don C and I be Don C Wyke 
is here as well as Java 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 Doctor 2. JJ's is also logged in as well as Juana Taco, which we had those the other day. Went to Taco John's because, well, you know, it was there. I was there. Seemed like proper thing to do. Got a six pack and a pound. Booyah! For those of you that don't know, that's six tacos and a pound of tater olays. Arriba! I also see Meister Brower is in the chat. Hey, Woody! As well as the lovely Rain and RLM Fluky. Balls to the wall on Friday. Cool. Okay, Grimmy's flying solo on Friday with balls to the wall. Hun, don't hurt yourself, okay? Don't run too far or too fast against that wall because you wind up getting walnuts. Um, <laughs> and Woody, Meister Brower just pinged out. Okay, RLM Fluke, the Vanna White of the RLM channel, as well as Rob Works. Hey, did you do the bubbler, hun? And did I just miss it? Am I a little slow on the uptake? I probably am. Yo quiero Taco Bell. <laughs> <laughs> I keep seeing all this shit from Meister Barracks. I'm scrolling back to see if, um, nope. Oh, bless your heart, Rob. There's that bubbler. He's so awesome. I also see Trust No One, the trusty feller, is in the chat. Oh, Rome's. I really do miss the Rome's. That's such a fun one to do. I also see Woodman is still here, even though Meister Brow has pinged out. Beetle! Hi, Beetle. I saw that you like dirty girls. You like the dirty girls? <laughs> I won't tell anyone, except for someone that might listen. <laughs> Hi, Colfax 101. I know you're Ninson Dubois in disguise. I know you are. I also see Dimma Dimma Dimma, as well as Dork Waters. Ooh, and they're deep, too, and they're cold. I also see Frumpy. Hi, Frumpy. I really, really like that kitty cat thing from Imgur the other day. I showed it to the grands, and they just laughed like crazy. The one where the where the one kitty cat's all cowered down in the, uh, in you know, up against the wall, and the other one is kind of leaning over it, and here comes that little vacuum robot thing, and the kitty cat just ever so nonchalantly with the back paw just turned it, and it went the other way while the kitty went back to giving the death gr death look, too. That was cool. Grandkids thought it was hilarious as hell. Uh, do do do. Kozu, hi Kozu, how you doing? Moi 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 moi. Oh, look at all the poxes we've got. A pox upon thee, with a pox box and a poxified and a poxophone and a pox at home. And I'm thinking Dr. Seuss is not too far behind. I also see pom 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 sauces in the chat, as well as Skittle taste the rainbow and the one, the only, the Phantom who did my wonderful intro for me. Hey there, hi there, ho there, all that are listening and those that may listen in later. Uh, proof we live in a computer simulation, artificial computer code found in string theory equation. They're all theories and it's fancy schmancy math. You know, and if they make the numbers big enough, they become unreal. That's what they count on. Get it? Count on? <laughs> yeah. I, my grandchildren and I have been having some discussions because there's some spelling issues going on. And so I equated it to Harry Potter and said, you know, it's called spelling for a reason because words have meaning. And if they are properly spelled, then they will. Do, they may not necessarily do what you intend because you have to make sure you know the exact definition how to use it, all that other fun stuff. But yes, it's all spelling, and it's all done to distract and to put a, uh, oh, not necessarily put you to sleep, but to keep you mollified. Maybe that's what it is. Irritated and mollified all at the same time. It's kind of a strange thing, but yet it happens. Okay, I'm going to check this out because this is WorldTruth.TV and it looks kind of interesting, so I want to check it. Although I think all those theories, you know, someone, my little sister, she and I are going to have a discussion too because she did the DNA thing with Ancestry.com. Damn thing did not recognize the Germanic roots, actually the Russian and Germanic roots. And uh, 
yeah, a bunch of us kind of jumped all over that shit and went, seriously, you believe this crap? Because my mother is German Russian. I mean, there there ain't no nothing else. It's Russia and Germany. That's pretty much where she came from, or ancestor wise, and that was less than two percent of the DNA code. And I'm thinking, wow, because they went to Germany after they migrated from Russia when the Tsar shit was going on, and what said that we were eighty or she's eighty percent British Isles, and I'm thinking, no, no. So we kind of, we, the family kind of pounced on her. And she kind of let us know that we're all a bunch of conspiracy theorists. And it's like, you know, the reason it, a theory is all well and good to, you know, like string theory and um, uh, the theory of relativity and the theory, gravitational theory and, you know, all of these other theories that you want to put out there until you put conspiracy in front of it. And then all of a sudden, theory becomes a bad thing. What the hell? So she and I are going to have a little chit-chat. Because I'm going to her house this coming weekend. <laughs> Isn't that great? Going to celebrate her, her youngest graduating high school. And I'm, I'm going to call her on her shit. Face to face. About this theory nonsense. Why does theory lose its validity when you put conspiracy in front of it? Why does it gain validity when you put things like relativity or gravity or what's this? String in front of it. It's just that one word where it loses all validity. What the hell? Oh well, <clears throat> this article goes on to say, suppose you spent your whole life as a character in a computer game, The Sims. I, I, I've never even seen that game, let alone I don't think my grandkids played the uh mm, with blocks and then they also pay play harry potter and they play some zombie killing thing and i don't know i look at them and go really do you have to play shoot 'em up games i really don't like that in any case <clears throat> what are the sims i have no idea i the only sims i know is the simpsons in any case or O.J. Simpson. Um, back to this. Uh, you would have no idea that the world around you wasn't real or was really just a computer game. But suppose one day one of your fellow Sims, a scientist, while trying to discover the physics of your world, stumbled upon elements of the source code of the very game you were in. Would you freaky deaky or would you go, dude, that's so awesome. Wait, don't push delete. Please, no control alt delete either, okay? Don't don't reboot. Maybe okay, maybe you do need to reboot. Can you partial reboot? There's some things I'd like to be rebooted. Booted once and then rebooted just for shits and giggles. Um so here you are living a normal life. And then you find, much to your astonishment, that you are, in fact, in a video game inside a computer. So how would you react? Would you freak out? Surely this couldn't happen in the real world, right? Such a notion would be impossible and ridiculous, right? But wait, there are many millions of Sims games going on. And only one real world. Oh, how do we know which one's the real world, though? You know, we talked about the fun house. The room with all the mirrors trying to get out of. Where's the real door? Huh? Oh, Grim, you used to... Oh, I've I've never seen it, never played it. I, I don't know nothing about it. The only game I know about on the... Com well, okay, I play Bejeweled every once in a while. I used to play Angry Birds with the kids. And, you know, like Donkey Kong and Mario Brothers and that kind of... I don't play the new one, so... Um, and now, uh, Gummy Drop, or whatever the hell that is. I got addicted to that damn game, and I hate it. <laughs> Bubble Bobble was another fun one. But, yeah, I've never played SimCity. Um, I don't know what that one is. That the kids, they it's Blocks. You know, when you you can build things, or I don't remember what it's called. 
I watch them and I just kind of go, what are you doing? Why'd you do that? Oh, okay. No, I don't want to play. I'm just watching. <laughs> In any case, back to this article. Where is the real world? I don't know that there is a real one. Maybe it's maybe it's all just computer generated. <sighs> oh well. Only one real world, huh? Meaning that there are many more Sims than people living in the real world. Good. That, mm, mm, there's probably an awful lot more Sims than anybody could even possibly imagine. So does this sound impossible anymore? Mm, no, not really. In fact, this being the case, it would be more probable that you are living in a video game right now than living in the real world. Although, tell my finger that, because I got a nasty sliver in it the other day. Man, that some bitch hurt. Oh, <laughs> simulated sliver. <laughs> so, am I messing with your head yet? Uh-huh. Well, not mine, because I already messed with it. So, what if I told you that the above scenario was not just a thought experiment, but something that actually happened in our quote-unquote real world? As it turns out, just such a thing has happened. James Sylvester Gates, Jr., a leading physicist and scientist or science advisor to POTUS Dengelberry, found artificial computer code built into the equations of super string theory. You know, if you look hard enough, you can find computer codes built into everything, hun goes on to say specifically a particular kind of computer code that is used to search engines on our computers. Meaning, if this discovery holds up, it would appear that there are in they, that we are in someone else's video game. Who is the programmer? Can I cybernetically drop kick them like right between the Yeah. So Oh, and if you don't believe him, check out the video. It has James Gates Jr. talking with none other than famed Neil D. Grassy, assy, about the astonishing new theory. B. Neil DeGrasse Tyson, I used to really like him until I, I caught a couple of fibs. Just this, just little bitty whoppers. There is a video attached to this. And in the video are a number of other interesting video uh, videos linked via annotations as well. And as it turns out, this is not the only clue that we are living in a virtual reality. Um, you can see a list of virtual reality effects concealed within what we normally think of as relativity and quantum physics. And, if you wish, there's a... Um, PBS physics documentaries as well. So, a um, couple of videos here for you to peruse at your leisure. I don't know that I will get to them this week, definitely, but um, what? Minecraft. There you go, Kate. That's what it is. Minecraft. God, they do all kind of stuff in there. Hi, Miss Chloe. Um, okay. Yeah, I used to play the Alien game, too. You know, back with the Atari, I had one of them. When the kids were little, little, oh man, we used to have so much fun. Space Invaders, and, and Tank, and Pong. <laughs> you know those high-tech games? Yeah, I used to play those a lot. Okay, I'm going to come over here and share this over on this effing site real quick. By the way, if you are so inclined, if you got a few extra dollars, please come on over to Freedom's Network. Click on the Donate to Freedom's Network button and give them five, ten bucks because if not, it will shut down June 23rd of this year. So, you know, if you are are of a mind. It would be really cool if you did, though. I think the more places that you have to share information, the better. And, you know, it's much better to be able to have more places to search. 
So, um, let me do this one. I do think that's cool. And, you know, it wouldn't surprise me one damn bit. Actually, I'm reading book four in the uh, Ringing Cedars. I know I've said that multiple times. And uh, Anastasia is explaining to um, Nikolai. I think that, is that his name? Mm, probably not. I probably got it wrong. In any case, she's explaining to him how the world started, you know, with the idea and the energy turning to matter and and it's really kind of fascinating right now i don't have it within reach so i can't read it to you but hey okay let's see where else am i at mm, no thank you now i saw this one over on mines and i thought sweet because number one went shopping at costco with my daughter over the weekend and got some raw honey that's what the label said must be true of course everything else said organic it you know and i'm to the point now i see organic on the label it's like pfft, i ain't buying that shit yeah everybody says organic yeah, 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 yeah. And a lot of this stuff, it's like, really? They haven't done genetically modified of that yet, so... Mm, at least not that we know of. In any case, this is over on greenmedinfo.com. And it's the five amazing healing honey facts. I do love honey. And uh, I actually gave some to my granddaughter the other day because she was having a little bit sore ear and... Um, throat had kind of a tickle so a tablespoon of honey and then I gave her one of my uh, breathe respiratory drops that I get from doTERRA and uh, yeah she was feeling just fine within an hour so <clears throat> honey unlike almost everything else we consume in our diet was intended solely to be a form of nourishment albeit for the bees only milk, to my knowledge, shares this singular biological imperative. But honey is far more than a source of sweetness and quick energy within the human diet. Honey has profound medicinal applications, and some of which are as follows. Now, it feeds the good bacteria. It's a little known fact that bees have a diverse population of beneficial lactic acid bacteria or lab in their honey cult or in their honey crop. The bulge between the esophagus and the gizzard of the bee. Ah. In fact, according to newly published research in PLOS, studies of lab in all extant honeybee species plus related uh, apid bees reveal that one of the largest collections of novel species from the genera Lactobacillus and Bifidobacterium. Hey, <laughs> I didn't hurt myself saying that one. Um, yeah, it's the uh, largest collection of those ever discovered within a single insect. And suggest a long history of association. Indeed, raw honey feeds good bacteria. It's been experimentally demonstrated in 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 vitro or a petri dish conditions and to increase the number of lactobacillus uh, acidophilus acidophilus and lactobacillus Plantarium counts 10 to 100 fold compared with sucrose. Oh, okay. Well, whatever that means. Now, it also fights the bad bacteria, as in MRSA. Reports of honey eradicating MRSA infection have been reported in the medical lit literature for well over a decade. MRSA is an acronym for methicillin resistant Staph Staphylococcus aureus. Arius. And it produces a biofilm which makes it especially resistant to conventional my antimicrobial agents. Now, honey has been shown to be effective at killing biofilm associated MRSA isolates from patients suffering from chronic rhinositis. 
Hmm. Also, something else that works very well for MRSA is um, melaleuca or tea tree oil. Or thieves blend, if you know how to make thieves oil with essential oils. They are starting to use that. They're diffusing that in hospitals, in rooms of people that have been diagnosed as having MRSA. And they will diffuse that in the room, and within 48 hours, the patient is recovering. Just saying. And normally, it takes a lot longer than that for MRSA, if at all. Back to this. <clears throat> this has also been demonstrated in human research with 70% effective rate in destroying MRSA in chronic venous ulcers. Moreover, Manuka also synergizes with conventional antibiotics, making MRSA bacterial isolates more susceptible to their antibacterial action. Ah. Another one, it kills dental plaque causing bacteria. Hey, Manuka honey, which I had a chance to buy some Manuka honey, but it was like 30 some dollars for a little bitty, and it's like, no, no, I got a great big jug of um, raw honey that was um, distributed, okay, it's distributed out of Colorado. So it's pretty close to, and eh, close enough for me. <laughs> They say that honey, it doesn't really, you know, if you're, unless you're dealing with allergies, you don't really have to worry so much about it being a local honey, because if it's a local honey and you're dealing with allergies, then that honey will help you deal with the pollen that is messing with you. But other than that, any raw honey is good for you. So just putting that out there. Now, Manuka honey is a special honey produced by flowers of the Manuka plant that grows in New Zealand and Australia. And it was shown at least as effective as the chemical chlorohexidine gluconate often used in mouthwash. And it reduced plaque formation as in mouthwash or as a mouthwash. How cool is that? Maybe honey. Hey, that would make that... Uh, Hmm, make that coconut oil taste a little bit better while I'm pulling with it. Do just a little bit of honey in my coconut oil and then pull. Hmm, satisfy my sweet tooth, kill the bacteria, and whiten my teeth. All while I'm just pulling with coconut oil. Cool. Okay, another thing. It's superior to pharma uh, pharmaceutical at killing herpes. I've read about that several times. In a 2004 study published in the Medical Science Monitor, it showed that topical honey was far superior to the drug acylclavor, or yeah, trade name of Zovarax, in treating both labial or lip and genital herpes lesions. And according to the amazing study, for labial herpes, the mean duration of attacks and pain, occurrence of crusting, and the mean healing time with honey treatment were 35, 39, 28, and 43 percent better, respectively, um, as opposed to the uh, big pharma shit. Now, for genital herpes, the mean duration of attack and pain occurrence crusting, and the mean healing time with honey treatment were 53, 50, 49, and 59% better. So the two cases of labial herpes and one case of genital herpes remitted completely with the use of honey, and the lesions crusted in three patients with labial herpes and four patients in genital herpes with um, with the pharmaceutical treatment, none of the attacks remitted, and all of the lesions developed crust. So, no side effects were observed with repeated applications of honey either, whereas three patients developed local itching with the pharmaceutical. It's also protective against gastric damage, because honey has been known to prevent alcohol uh, idomethacin or NSAID. Oh, an NSAID painkiller and aspirin-induced lesions. Oh, 
I did not know that. How cool is that? So that's just a sampling of the research indicating that the profound medicinal value of honey. But don't be saying that it cures anything because next thing you know, the Food and Drug Administration is going to say it's no longer food. Now it's a drug. That's why we have both of them in our name. And then they're going to say, you have to go through us and it has to have proper testing and you can't have it unless you have a doctor's note. Kiss my ass. And in case you're wondering, my grandchildren have heard me say that kind of stuff before too. So, um, so if you would like to view the full range of demonstrable health benefits of honey, take a look at the page dedicated to the topic, which now includes research of 120 plus ailments and or symptoms which may benefit from its use. And there are links here for you to go check them out. So, awesome possum. Yes, honey is very good for you. Ms. Pac-Man. Hey, there you go. Ooh, you're going to be weed eating? Ah, I'm going to be doing that tomorrow morning. Have fun, Chloe. Yeah. Weeding is not fun, but <clears throat> weed eating isn't. And, you know, I really would much rather pull the weeds than weed eat, but um, it goes a lot faster if you weed eat. And, yeah, tomorrow's going to be some mowing, but I'm going to show the grandkids how to use a riding mower. <laughs> Did I tell you 13, 12, and 10? They're big enough. I also have a push mower. So... And there goes a grandchild running through the house, <laughs> trying to be ever so sneaky. <laughs> Bless her heart, she just plain ain't sneaky. Okay. Um, okay, and World Truth TV, I just refreshed Spreaker, and it's talk now it has a galactic tidal wave of divine light is raising the frequency of Earth, ending the old reality. Should I go there? Should I? I think I will. Just because. Because I don't like this crap that's going on in the world. It's really freaking... There's some of this stuff that's very infuriating. And I have noticed people being nicer. You know, sometimes you have to smile first, but eh, it doesn't cost me anything to smile. And you know, sometimes that smile doesn't necessarily mean I'm happy. Sometimes it's just a smile like, push it. Go ahead. Let's find out. In any case, a galactic tidal wave of divine light is raising the frequency of Earth, ending the old reality. How cool would that be? And you know what? It's really not that hard to do. Just start being nice to each other. Be surprised what kind of results you'll get from that. Over time, our world will undergo a number of different changes and energetic shifts. And I do believe the Mayan were kind of sort of talking about this. Although people always misinterpret. They always go, it's going to be the end of the world as we know it. Well, you know, every night when you go to bed and you close your eyes, the end of the world as you know it has just occurred. Because when you wake up in the morning, something else happened that has changed the world. So, stop freaking out about it. Stop thumping your Bibles, too. Criminy Christmas, peeps. It's a book that was written by men. And although it does have some good advice, it also has some not-so-good advice. So take it with a really healthy grain of salt, like maybe a five-pound bag. <sighs> oh, well. We are going over some ener or going through some energetic shifts as well. And some are so slight that we don't even realize that they've occurred, while others are significantly larger and more noticeable. One such major shift is currently underway, providing us with an important shift towards the ending of our old reality and the ascension to what is next to come. Now, a lot of this, I'm, I just wanted to be able to share this, and there is a video attached to it. I do think, you know, when that alignment happened, uh, they were talking about some kind of which I'm not real sure that I trust NASA. Well, I know I don't trust NASA about anything anymore. Not real sure I trust all this alignment stuff because, yeah, you know, 
did, mm, I'm still kind of juggling what I think. But, um, you know, if there is like a gravitational pull, and if multiple large bodies did line up, that does have, to my little mind of understanding gravity, that would, I think, increase some kind of pull or tug or whatever. So, um, apparently this is talking about some of the, oh, an electromagnetic field shifts on Earth, which, whether that's something because of the galactic core or whatever, the great sun at the galactic center, or if it's just Earth's magnetic fields shifting, that's going to mess with us. It really is, because every damn one of us alive right now is used to the way the magnetic lines worked our whole lives, basically. And now they're shifting, now they're moving, people are starting to get wonky. I know I am every once in a while. I'll be, you know, just walking along, and then all of a sudden it's like the... And I don't know if you've ever had this happen to you. I'm not really lightheaded or dizzy. Don't feel faint, anything like that. But it's almost like reality does a shift and then comes back again. Have you ever had one of those moments where it's like everything just kind of blurs and moves to the side and then shifts right back again? It's really the weirdest feeling in the world. And I've been having a few of those lately, and it's like, okay. And I don't even have to be moving. I can just be sitting. And then all of a sudden, reality just kind of does a... Mm, mm. So, are they rebooting the system? Is somebody reprogramming? I don't know. But I'm noticing things. I don't know if anybody else is or not. Don't be afraid, oh, well, maybe be afraid because I'm noticing things, and if you're noticing things too, then <laughs> you're in the same group as me. <laughs> in any case, it does give some different symptoms that you may be experiencing if you are noticing any these electromagnetic shifts or anything like that. Um, if you notice that you need your need for alone time and for personal space has increased. Uh-huh. A uh, heightened sense of smell depends on the aroma. Uh, a deep longing to go home without knowing where home is. Oh, I have, I have this thing of once I get home, it's like, I ain't budging. No, no, I love you, but no. <laughs> I'm really getting there. Um, increased feelings of static electricity in the body. Yeah, every once in a while I do get a buzz going on. A distorted sense of time, feeling as though it's slowing down or speeding up. Yeah, especially since I no longer have to go into woik. Sinus or allergy issues, mm, off and on. Unexplained body aches, pains, tension, and soreness. No, I can explain every damn one of them. It's called yard work. Intense, detailed dreams that may be prophetic or may be odd or bizarre in nature. That's nothing new for me. Sudden, unexplained changes in body temperature. Once again, not something new for me, although I have been told that I can get very, very warm, like, usually it's when I'm sleeping, and it's like, okay, I slept right through it. <laughs> changes in both vision and perception. Mm-hmm. Increased psychic awareness, clairvoyance, clairaudience, clairsentience, and intuition. I can say intuition, but I don't know any clairs. Uh, clumsiness or lack of coordination. Okay, that I resemble pretty much all my life. A deep intuition or sense that something is wrong or changing. Oh, yes. Yes. I can tell when something ain't quite right. And, yeah, yeah. Cold or flu-like symptoms that come and go suddenly? Mm, no, not really. Issues involving the stomach or digestive tract, such as IBS or, or unexplained nausea. Occasionally, more so lately. 
Changes in diet, appetite, and eating habits? No, not really. Sudden development of allergies and intolerances of certain foods? Mm, no. Sensitivity to sound? Yeah. <laughs> Frequent headaches and or feelings of pressure in the head? No. Changes in sleep patterns or feelings of extreme fatigue? I have had the drowsies. I get those around 2 in the afternoon. And if I get a, like a 15-minute cat nap, I'm good to go. Um, increase in daydreaming and fantasizing? Mm, wow. No. <laughs> Okay, so apparently this process is recalibrating our body. And it's not only a surface shift, but one that reaches right down to our DNA, reforming and redefining every part of our very being. And this process may sound alarming, but rest assured, it will bring great benefits. Which, you know, I think it's probably, it could possibly be helping you to deal with some of the nastiness that the leeches that be have been um, gifting to us over the last few years. I do know that my essential oils have been helping quite a bit and I don't know that that it's just because I believe they are working or if they really are working and then therefore I believe that they work. I, mm, that's a who, which came first, the chicken or the egg kind of thing. But I'm going to go ahead and share this with you anyway, because I do find that kind of stuff fascinating. Cobalt 40V weed trimmer. Booyah! Hey, I do have an electric weed trimmer. I do, I do, I do. Grimmy's not in alignment. Thanks, Goober. The planet's today. Let me check that out. Um, yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, we use cookies. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Huh. Okay. I'll put this over on the effing side as well. Be spacey. Or have a magnetic personality. However you wish to look at that. Um, I'm going to do the little 3D froggy guy just because I'm feeling rather 3D froggy. So, now, where, where are you tonight? <laughs> I don't know why I got that stuck in my head, but I do. Um, neroli oil. That was something, um, I think Frumpy had brought something up about that with CBD oil and and then it came to mind or it came up in a discussion yesterday with my dear friend Lisa B. And I do happen to have some and it, uh, it smells really wonderful, I think. But neroli oil is another essential oil and here are 15 wonderful benefits of it. Now, the health benefits of neroli essential oil can be attributed to its properties as an antidepressant, aphrodisiac. Well, you know, if it's an aphrodisiac, you're not going to be depressed for long unless you can't find anybody except for Rosie Palm. It's an antiseptic, a uh, bactericidal, okay, it's a cordial, a uh, carminative, psychotrizant, cytophal... Uh, phylactic, disinfectant, antispasmodic, deodorant, digestive, emollient, sedative, and tonic. Wow. All those things. Okay, so neroli oil is an essential oil from a citrus fruit. And because of this fact, most of the medicinal properties match those of other citrus essential oils. Now, this oil is extracted by steam distillation from the flowers of neroli, which is a, the botanical name, um, Citrus Arontium. And there is another name, Citrus Vulgaris, uh -huh, which is often assigned to it as well. Now, the chief components of this essential oil are alpha-pinene, 
alpha terpenine, beta penine, camphenine, uh, farnesol, geraniol, geraniol, indole, nerol, linalool, linalil, acetate, methyl, whatever all those. That's an awful lot of, if you're a chemist, you would know if I didn't butcher them too bad. <laughs> but have you ever heard about eau de cologne? Do you know what it's traditionally made from? Well, now you do. It's made from this neroli essential oil. Even the name neroli is related to its use as a perfume. Now, the health benefits of neroli essential oil. <coughs> excuse me. Snuck up on me. R. It relieves chronic depression. If you cannot escape from depression, even when you're out at parties, <coughs> excuse me, or discotheques, you can try this essential oil to relieve your chronic depression. Neroli essential oil drives away sadness, invokes a feeling of joy and happiness while uplifting your overall mood. That is why this oil is extensively used in aromatherapy. It is an aphrodisiac. Hey, baby. <laughs> For those who want to relive those pink and blue moments of their youth, even in their 50s, 60s, or 90s, they should give this essential oil a try. Is that a hint? <laughs> Is that why this came, keeps coming up in conversations? What the hell? I'm not depressed, so... <laughs> It not only increases the libido, but it also helps cure loss of interest in sex, or frigidity, or impotence, and erectile dysfunctions. And you don't have to take a little blue pill. And it's pleasant smelling, too. It has also been known to create romantic and sexual feelings, which is very important for uh, having a happy and successful sex life. Well, you know, yeah, duh. It prevents infection. So, when you get a cut or wound and the doctor is too far to reach for an anti-tetanus injection, which, you know, if... Uh, you should apply this oil to your wounds. This will effectively protect your wounds from infections and tetanus. You can then take your time to visit the doctor, although I would not. I have not for a couple years. I'm being stubborn. It kills bacteria. This powerful essential oil kills bacteria and keeps your body free from a number of microbial infections and toxins. In diseases like cholera, typhoid, and food poisoning, as well as certain skin conditions caused by bacteria, this oil may prove useful in giving considerable relief. Maybe I need to get another bottle of this. <laughs> I have some family members that could use this too. It keeps you warm. Now, I don't have a problem with that because I, I still hot flash from time to time. Neroli essential oil is a very good choice to give you to protect uh, as protection from cold during winters. So, keeps you warm, prevents coughs and colds from infecting you. Ah ha ha! See? There's another one. It will also curb the production of excess mucus and make it easy for you to breathe and sleep in winter. Okay. I'm definitely going to have to buy another bottle of this. Uh, carminative. This will make an exit sign for the gases that build up inside your stomach and intestines. I won't have any more rocketeer fuel. <laughs> On being relieved of your gases, you feel light. Your appetite comes back. There's no more indigestion, and the inflammation is gone, along with the stomach aches. On top of that, you get lower blood pressure as a bonus, too. Booyah! As for skin care, alrighty. The property of Neroli essential oil works better than any anti-mark cream or lotion. In fact, some herbal anti-mark applications use this essential oil. This causes scar spots and aftermarks uh, 
left by acne boils and pox to fade away. I did not know that. How cool. See all these bonus things I'm learning about an oil that I bought because it was the special of the month. Cool. Uh, it's cytophilactic, which means it promotes the generation of new cells and stimulates the health of those already present. This makes you grow bigger, stronger, and healthier. I don't want to get any bigger. Mm -hmm. Cures infection. When taken internally, it disinfects the body as well as your surroundings as it cures infections of the colon, prostate, kidneys, and urinary tracts. Additionally, it helps cure skin infections and protects against new infections as well. Sweet! Also handles spasms. Um, gives release from spasmodic coughs, cramps, spasmodic aches, and spasmodic cholera. It also relieves the muscles throughout the body. Ah, and relaxes. See, aromatherapy, that's why it gets used. Has a sedative effect. It sedates all the organs and metabolic functions of the body, including those in your head. It gives relief from anxiety, distress, anger, depression, inflammations, and other irritations. In other words, it relaxes both the body and the soul. It also acts as a tonic because it safeguards all aspects of good health, such as maintaining the correct rate of metabolism, proper circulation, and boosted immune system. <coughs> you can also use it as a deodorant because it, it can drive away foul odors and it can be used as on the body as a perfume or in rooms as room fresheners and vaporizers. Huh. <coughs> Excuse me. This will not only drive away odor, but will disinfect the rooms against germs and toxins. Hmm. <coughs> okay. I'm definitely, yeah. At least one more. Hmm. Cool. Promotes digestion um, and increases appetite. I don't necessarily need that. I don't need the increased appetite. Just saying. Moisturizes the skin. It's one of the most popular properties of neroli essential oil and it's a, because of its ability to care for the skin. Makes the skin smooth, free from infections, and adds a glamorous glow. It also helps maintain the right moisture and oil balance in the skin. I'm wondering if I were to mix that neroli with my coconut oil and use that as for pre going out in the sun. Oh, I would smell wonderful. <laughs> and my skin would be soft. The other benefits are it can be used to uh, um, deal with uh, neuralgia, colitis, diarrhea, and fat cracks. What the hell are fat cracks? Hmm. It's also effective in reducing weight. Now the word of caution, there are no inherent threats of using neuroli essential oil, but you should avoid using it when you need to concentrate on something or if you want to avoid sleep uh, due to the strong um, su sedative nature of it. Hmm. Now, if you wish to blend neroli essential oils, per, it does very well with citrus oils. Also mixes well with the essential oils of benzoin, geranium, lavender, jasmine, yangling, rosemary, and sandalwood. And yangling is one of those that is also supposed to be very good for boosting the libido. I read about that. <laughs> And Lisa B. told me about it, and I went, really? Does it? Oh, cool. Oh, see you, cowboy. Darn it all. Um. Okay. Put this over here on the F and side as well. I love learning about, you know, different things that I did not know about the wonderful oil that I have now. Because I've got several different places that I get from now. I'm still a consultant for doTERRA, but there's several other places that I get essential oils that 
come highly recommended from Dr. Pappas and a few other people that I trust their opinion on. Um, I do not buy the essential oils off of Amazon. Sorry, I just don't. Seen too many of the chemical breakdowns of those, and uh, no. I just don't go there. I will get my coconut oil, you know, I'll get the blending oils off of there. But when it comes to the essential oils, no, no. Go Get the good stuff. You're going to pay for the good stuff. And there's a reason for that. It takes a lot less to do a lot more. So, actually costs you a lot less in the long run. Now, let's see, do I want to go here? Um, hmm. <coughs> okay. This is the one that Vinny tagged me in over on um, Twitter. Thanks, Vinny. You're such a Vinny. <laughs> From CNN, of all places, do not auto-start. Sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it does. And An it's, oh, man. shut up, dumb thing. No, I don't accept. I don't want no cookies. I don't want none of your shit. Okay, so, uh, when police in Winfield, Kansas, pulled Rudy Samuel over, uh, pulled him over, the 31-year-old felt he had done nothing wrong. So he started recording the encounter on Facebook Live. Officer says, I failed to put my signal on within a 100 feet, he says to the camera. And it wasn't 100 feet, but whatever. Which, that's a nitpicky. That's a, we're looking for an excuse to pull your ass over thing. That right there. Anybody, everybody knows that. Now, the video shot on May 13th begins with Samuel uh, provides Winfield police officers with his license and registration. When the two officers approach Samuel's car again, they offer a different reason for the traffic stop. Hey, Mr. Samuel, what caught my attention was this vegetation stuff right here. One of them says, pulling something from the seal of the car's driver's side window. <clears throat> he responds that it must be from a tree and adds that he does not smoke. Later, he asks officers about the original reason he was pulled over. They tell him that they already explained it and asked him to step out of the car so they could search it. He refuses, telling them to test the vegetation first. To which the officer responds, I ain't got to test it right now. And Samuel, who is an African American, in other words, he was born with a better tan than the rest of us. And the two officers were pasty. And a spokesman for Samuel told CNN that they believe the incident was racially motivated, which mm, I really can't say it's not. He kept saying, test it. And they snatched him out of the car, handcuffed him, and banged him around a bit, said Pete Wagner of Freedom One, which is a grassroots organization that seeks to find fair solutions to complaints against companies, police, and other institutions. Now, the Winfield Police Chief, Brett Stone, told CNN that his officers gave Samuel two verbal warnings before they let him go. He said the incident is under review and declined to make any additional comment. Gave him two verbal warnings before they let him go. And yet, if he was snatched out of the car, handcuffed, and banged around a bit, I'm thinking that's a little bit on the physical side as well. That went just a step beyond verbal. The officers released Samuel after searching the vehicle, which they had no right to. I think there's this is a civil rights case, if I ever heard one. Unlawful search. Assholes. <clears throat> Although, yeah, the vehicle's probably registered, so therefore he's just the registered operator of the vehicle because the state owns the vehicle because we all, like idiots, sent our titles in. Our certificate of ownership sent that to the state. Now we're just registered users. Assholes. In any case, um, after searching his vehicle, they didn't find anything suspicious. 
and Wright claims that police did not test the vegetation and did not give Samuel any citations. In other words, they were just harassing him because they could, because we have this magic badge, and we have handicuffs, and we can slap you around. In the video, Samuel repeatedly says he did not give his consent to be searched. He also tells the officers he has a licensed firearm in his car. Wright said Samuel is suffering from nightmares and trauma related to the incident, which I can't say is to blame him, although he is grateful for the support of people have given him on social media. I'm thinking and kiss my eyes, you guys. He wants to use this platform not just for him, but for so many people that have gone through something like this and didn't live to talk about it, which, hey, there's a lot of them. Freedom One plans to protest the police department's actions and hire an attorney to represent Samuel. The video of the incident has been shared some 900 times as of Tuesday afternoon, sparking an online discussion about how race may have influenced the officer's behavior. Winfield is a city of 1,200 people. It's within the uh, Wichita metro area, though. That's considered the Wichita metro area, so they have that big city attitude in Podunkville. Apparently, dozens of people have visited the Winfield Police Department Facebook page to complain about officers' treatment of Samuel. And, yeah, I think... I really do think, because I did watch, I didn't watch the whole thing, but I watched part of it, and it's like, the hell, this is bullshit. Oh, go away. Frickin' CNN anchors. All a pain in the ass. You love your queen? I'm so happy for you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you once again, Vinny, for helping me see that Kansas once again is trying to step up there and play no, just like the big boys. You know, we may be a predominantly rural state, but we can bring out the butt heads when we need to. Or, okay, we don't want them to come out, but they do. I think I'm going to do that one, and then I'm going to do that one, just because. Because they're assholios. That was, that was total bullshit, as far as I'm concerned. Okay. Veg you, we saw this vegetation on your vehicle, dude, and we thought it was like pot or something. They don't really say that, but... You know that's where they're going. Yes, I see Bo is messaging me. Okay. <coughs> mm. Video, Bo, I don't have time to read it or listen to a video right now. Sorry, sweetheart. Okay, I got to get to this. This is from the unofficial 50 Nerds of Grey. You know, seeing as how we were talking about electromagnetic and string theory and all this other fun shit, let's check this out while I'm over on Facebook and got it pulled up. So, when Albert Einstein was making the rounds of his speaker's circuit, he usually found himself eagerly longing to get back to his laboratory work. One night, as they were driving to yet another rubber chicken dinner, Einstein mentioned to his chauffeur, a man who somewhat resembled Einstein in looks and manner, that he was tired of speech making. Excuse me, Belch. I have an idea, boss, his, so sh his chauffeur said. I've heard you give this speech so many times, I'll bet I could give it for you. Einstein laughed loudly and said, why not? Let's do it. So, when they arrived at the dinner, Einstein donned the chauffeur's cap and jacket and sat in the back of the room, and the chauffeur gave a beautiful rendition of Einstein's speech and even answered a few questions expertly. So then, a supremely pompous professor, aren't they all? Well, at least a good share of them are. 
asked an extremely esoteric question about antimatter formation, digressing here and there to let everyone in the audience know that he was nobody's fool, although all he had to do was open his mouth and people would realize that nobody wanted that fool. I go on. Without missing a beat, the chauffeur fixed the professor with a steely stare and said, Sir, the answer to that question is so simple that I will let my chauffeur, who is sitting in the back, answer it for me. Ha! Ha ha! Ha ha! Slam dunk! That's a good one. Now, from what I understand, um, there was another comedian that actually did this joke, but pretty funny pretty funny um and then someone had to in the comments say the problem with quotes found on the internet is they are often not true yeah i know nostradamus is credited with all kinds of quotes as well and it's like damn it okay here's the video apparently um jerry clower there you go I'll just go ahead and put this over here in the RLM chat. I know he's got vegetation. It's devil's lettuce. Where's the dressing? They was looking. Oh, they will come up with just about any kind of moronic excuse when they pull you over. And that one of the things that I've learned is do not talk to them. Don't, don't, mm, no, no, don't say nothing. Because everything you say will be used against you in a court of law. Okay. I got to get to this one. Grimmy shared this. Sent it to me. Bless your heart, Grim. Thank you ever so much. It's from September of 2016, but it's still very appropriate. From MNN, or the Mother Nature Network. Nine skills they don't teach in school, but should. They actually taught these when I was still in school. Or at least the one that the picture at the top. <clears throat> taught that when I was still in school. In Michigan, legislators are mulling over a plan intended to increase the number of CPR trained members in their community by requiring that students learn the life-saving skills before they graduate from high school. If it passes, the new bill would require schools to teach CPR and the use of defibrillators to students at least one time between grades 7 and 12. Really? You have that much in tax money that you just want to squander? Oh. Whatever happened to the Red Cross teaching those classes? Red Cross used to teach those classes. Didn't cost nothing. Hmm, didn't cost me anything when I took it. Ah, in an age of standardized testing, students are spending more time learning how to fill in a circle with a pencil and less time learning skills that might help them get by and get ahead in life. So here's nine courses we wish more schools would add to their curriculum. First aid. Along with CPR, students should learn other life-saving skills such as the Heimlich Maneuver as well as basic uh, first aid uh, like identifying an allergic reaction, making a splint, preventing infection, and bandaging a wound. Oh, but we can't have that because then the school nurse won't have anything to do besides call the parents and say, your child has a headache. Is it okay if I give them an ibuprofen? No. Number two, home repair. Yeah, they used to teach, <clears throat> well, not necessarily carpentry like that, but at least building cabinets and, you know, woodworking. It's amazing how many tasks there are to do around the house or an apartment. So while most of us know how to unclog a toilet or hang a picture on the wall, far fewer of us can fix a drippy sink or change an air conditioner filter or hang a level set of shelves. That's really sad. I know people who burn water 
I'm not kidding. I've seen it done. People who burn water. <laughs> They're scary. They're scary people out there. No, ma no amount of learning is going to fix some of this. Number three is budgeting. Yeah, we used to have that in school too. Studies show that the vast majority of Americans lack the basic financial skills necessary to make important decisions when it comes to their own wallets. Why is that? Because basically society itself doesn't know how to balance its budget. Christ, way back when I was first married, they had stuff coming about coming out about how many congressional members had bouncy check accounts. If people in Congress cannot balance check their personal checking accounts you know they're not going to balance balance a national budget and they just you're not supposed to do that anymore you're supposed to live on credit that's what they want you to do so you will just be used to being in debt so that when they finally say well you're a slave because debt you'll go oh but do I get to keep my plastic? People are idiots. Mm. So why aren't these skills emphasized in schools? Well, from the first lesson in addition and subtraction to more complex math lessons in percentages and algebraic equations, wouldn't it be nice if word problems focused on real life skills such as balancing a checkbook or creating a budget rather than whether or not a train leaving point A ever meets up with a train from point B. I tell you what, my grandkids get allowance and they have certain chores that are supposed to be done. And at the end of the week, mommy counts because they have to put their initial on the chore sheet. And mommy counts how many times their initial shows up, how many times the, the most amount of times they can have it, or have or most amount of numbers of chores or whatever that they can get done and then how many they actually got done and then she divides it out and then she she gets of course she's an accountant but she comes up with the percentage and then whatever they're the most you can get for your allowance this week she takes multiplies that by the percentage and that's what they get for their allowance and then she shows it to them and explains it to them exactly why this is what you got I know you thought you were going to get twenty dollars just because you know mom said twenty dollars a week well but if you only did 38 percent of the chores you aren't going to get 100 percent of the allowance so she's teaching my grandchildren to understand that you get what you give if you don't if you put out minimal effort, you receive minimal benefits in return. Booyah, daughter. Hit them in the pocketbook. A lot of time, that's where people get it. Hit them in the pocketbook. Number four, car repair. <clears throat> Excuse me. So even if we're not the drivers, most of us spend a good deal of time in cars each week. So it's important to know skills such as how to jump start a dead battery, how to check the air pressure in your tires, how to change a flat, bonus points for classes that go over simple skills that many students are ashamed to admit they're unsure about, like pumping gas and checking the oil level. We learned to change the oil as well as changing tires and changing filters. You know, we, we learned to do that stuff. Or at least I did. Um, swimming. Swimming really is pretty important. Which they have free swim lessons out here. So, And most of the kids go. Roughly 4,000 people die every year from accidental drowning. Which you can be an excellent swimmer and still drown. Just putting that out there. Most of those victims are under the age of 14. And according to the CDC... Um, for every child who dies from drowning, five more are treated in emergency departments for incidents related to drowning. Teaching kids to swim at a young age would go a long way toward minimizing these numbers. Actually, I did mommy and me with both of my girls. So, you know, they did 
Before they could walk, they were learning to swim. They swam in the womb. So I figured it really wouldn't be that much of a stretch for them. And both of my girls know how to swim. It was important for us to my mom. She didn't know how to swim, but she was it was important to her to make sure each one of her kids knew how to swim. So, I think that's, that's a good... Even if you don't like water, if you were, happen to be in a situation where you need to be able to at least tread water, could save your life. Number six, self-defense. Huh, we had that in middle school. <clears throat> in any case, not what they teach now, but eh, we did have some. So, when most people think about self-defense classes, they think about learning tricks to break boards with your fists or karate chop their opponents in the side. But self-defense is about teaching kids how to protect themselves, how to prevent bullying, how to identify dangers on the street, and how to react in an emergency. Self-defense classes help build confidence by teaching kids that they have the power to keep themselves safe. It's called situational awareness. And I had that discussion with my grandkids on the way to my house, letting them know that there were not going to be a lot of electronics played with at my house, simply because when they play electronics, the rest of the world goes away. And I want them to learn situational awareness. So, and the only way they can learn that is to be exposed to it. So, like taking them outside, dealing with, tripping over, hey, did you not see that? I did. Why should I have to warn you? You fell in the soft grass, you're not hurt. I'm one of those Grammys. <laughs> Number seven, cooking. Yes, they no longer do cooking classes out here. Lord help us. It can be so intimidating to those that have never tried it. But ramen noodles, PB&J, and pizza delivery can only get you so far in life. And your life will be a lot shorter considering. <clears throat> a few generations ago, home economics classes that included cooking and sewing were standard in most schools. But the problem was they were only offered to girls while boys took the classes in shop and woodworking. My high school that I went to, the boys took cooking classes. None of them took sewing, in, at least when I was there. Now, when my little brother was in school, he, he and a couple other friends took sewing just for shits and giggles and wound up really enjoying it. They learned how to repair their own clothes so they didn't have to rely on a woman to do it for them. For those of you that are thinking namby-pamby fairy stuff, it's learning to be self-sufficient. <clears throat> yes, we need to bring back home ec for all students so kids can learn how to make nutritious homemade food for themselves. Also, I saw something on the internet the other day about uh, knitting classes that men are starting up. You know, men's knitting circles and crocheting circles. And I thought, booyah, bonus round, you go, guys. And they create some absolutely amazing stuff. I was really impressed. There is nothing to be ashamed of with knowing how to do that. You know how to make your own clothing. You are self-sufficient. There is nothing. That's a, that's a prop up. That's not something to be ashamed of. Dude, if you can make your own clothing... Booyah. Booyah. Don't let anybody call you nothing, you know, except for maybe, can you make this for me? Charge them. Charge them. How to file taxes. Oh, pfft. I'm not even going to go there. <laughs> taxes is theft. And number nine, coding. Yeah, you do need to know the code. So, because, you know, and that's one of those things I did save. I saw it on... Um, Fakey book and um, oh yeah, self-declared judge in sovereign movement Bruce Bruce Doucette found guilty, and people were really really shocked by that. And I thought, why would you be shocked? Why are you surprised that the tyrants 
actually came up with a game plan to where if you started do something, doing something that used their rules against them, they would be able to turn it around and say, see, we told you they're a terrorist because you're terrifying them. I'll get to that here in just a minute, too, by the way. So, you do need to learn coding as in computer coding, and you need to learn coding as in the codes that they have going on, you know, with law enforcement. You need to know what you're up against. You need to know that. Now, the coding classes it's talking about here is for, like, computer science geeks, but you need to learn to be able to at least deal with technology and understand it and possibly be able to pr repair at least most of the qu the problems that you may have but you also need to understand codes and ordinances and that kind of stuff and I have to admit I am sorely lacking in that I did know my shit back when I was on city council I did know a lot because you know I got asked a lot of questions about it so I had to know what the hell I was talking about but I've let that slide and I need to I need to get myself reacquainted with that kind of stuff because in order for you to be able to deal with that shit or avoid any kind of unpleasantness if you will you need to understand what unpleasantness is out there so you know how to avoid it or avert it or combat it so thank you Grimmy that was an excellent article and so true there's so many things that kids need to learn and and one of the things um, how do you balance zero well Grim zero is nothing so you really don't have to balance anything um, while I was cleaning out the fun house uh, that's what we call the cave now, <laughs> or it used to be the man cave when when Poocher, my old boss, had lived here. That's what he called it was the man cave. Well, it's now the fun house because the the kids have dubbed it that. And while I was cleaning it out, I found a box of paperwork that I wondered where in the hell it went. Well, it went out there, and in there was a uh, book that has the Constitution, uh, the Declaration of Independence. The amendments, the articles of, oh, it was just there and now it's gone. Um, but it has several things all in this one booklet. And I was looking at it and Gracie started just quoting stuff. Apparently she's learned this in school just recently. And uh, I said, well, if you don't want it, honey, I'll take it inside and do myself a little refresher course just so I know what I'm up against. And she said, oh, Grammy, I want this. I want to take this because I think we're going to be learning about this again next year. So, um, yeah, Grimmy, I just put the link there, you silly man. <laughs> I can almost see. Almost. Okay. Ow, rascal. I know I love you too, sweetie. But your claws hurt. Okay. Uh, da -da, da -da, da -da -da. There we go. We'll do this one. Um, owie, rascal. Now I'm going to get to this one. And I saw it over on, um, actually on the RLM page on Facebook is where I saw it. And I don't remember who, somebody had clicked on it and done something and I went, oh, uh, okay, let me check this out. So this is from westword.com. Self-declared judge in sovereign movement, Bruce Doucette, found guilty. Now I just started reading it and I got to the point where it's like, and you expected something else. <clears throat> it's from March of this year, by the way. A two-week trial, uh, jury trial ended with a bang, or not with a bang, but with a whimper for Bruce Doucette, a computer repair shop owner from Littleton, 
who has espoused sovereign ideology, declared himself a judge. Though he is not recognized by any U.S. court, well, naturally, because he doesn't deem himself to be a member of that system. <clears throat> but I digress. And uh, established a people's grand jury in Colorado outside of the recognized judicial system. Now, pay attention to the wording here. Outside of the recognized judicial system. And... He's traveled to assist sovereigns in other parts of the country, including in the San Luis Valley uh, and Oregon, the latter to offer advice to Ammon Bundy and others who staged the infamous Mauer, uh, Mahler Wildlife Refuge occupation. And on Friday, March the 9th, the jury found Doucette guilty of 34 counts that he faced. The sentence hearing will be scheduled for May 22nd, which is yesterday. Now, many of the 34 charges of which Doucette was convicted fall under what, and this is where I went, no, really? They fall under what the FBI colloquially calls paper terrorism, which in Doucette's case <clears throat> included sending Colorado officials like judges, district attorneys, and even Governor Hickenlooper unofficial versions of subpoenas, arrest warrants, and liens. Now, westward obviously is part of that statist mindset, just from the verbiage that I'm getting so far. Because, yeah, it's, it's unofficial as in the current system, but how do you know it's not official? I mean, sovereign individuals... In any case, it goes on to say, the actions are motivated by a, quote-unquote, well, this, it, it's not quoted here, but fringe philosophy, by which subscribers like to set pose it that the United States government, at all of its levels, federal, state, and local, has become so corrupt and has diverged so far from the intentions of the nation's founders that it's left up to sovereigns to root out illegitimate public officials. I don't really call that a fringe philosophy myself. I call that matter of fact. As Westward explained in May 23rd cover story of the subject, sometimes calling themselves constitutionalists or freemen, individuals who subscribe to sovereign ideology often don't believe that they are required to follow any regulations drafted and passed by politicians. You know, things like tax codes or driver's license rules because the U.S. government has been corrupted and sovereigns are not under con contract to adhere to all of its laws. Okay. Uh, prove to me that we are. According to prosecutors uh, with the Colorado Attorney General's Office, Doucette and nine other individuals were part of an enterprise known as the People's Grand Jury of Colorado, through which they would send their paper threats to elected officials and in some cases negatively affect alleged victims' credit scores by filing liens. Wanny, 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 wah. I think he was throwing paper airplanes, Grim, but I'm not positive. Oh, thank you, Rob Works. It's not official unless you have a gang of thugs. Okay, thank you. I, I didn't realize that. Um, paper threats to elected officials. You know, elected officials, I'm sure, catch an awful lot of flack anyway. And if it negatively affect the alleged victim's credit scores by filing liens, obviously they must have had something in order to file that lien. Huh. I know I'm going out on a limb here, but I'm thinking, what, what part of Wanny Wanny Woo Woo do you people not get? You're whining. Oy. Oh, well. Late last year, two other members of the aforementioned group, Stephen Beifeld and Stephen Nolte, were sentenced to, wow, 22 and 36 years in prison, respectively. 
for many of the same counts Doucette faced. Wow! In a December 22nd article, we noted that Byfield and Nolte, in refusing to recognize the jurisdiction of the Denver County uh, Court, declined to call witnesses or take advisement from public defender. We concluded th um, that article with this. Given how things went for Nolte and Byfield, the pro uh, prospects do not look good for Judge Bruce Doucette, who is in jail on a bond of $350,000. So, like Byfeld and Nolte, Doucette refused counsel at his bizarre trial on March the 8th. Why should he have counsel if he, t if he accepts counsel? That means he accepts that you have jurisdiction over him. From what I understand of how this shit works. Granted, I don't understand it very well. I need to have Hal explain it to me, and I think it would take him longer than he has left to live. Because it's going to take a long time for me to stop asking questions. <laughs> <laughs> in any case, Doucette represented him, himself before the judge and jury, going up against the full weight of the Colorado Attorney General's office. He sat alone at a table, surrounded by stacks of documents and thick binders. Physically, he looked put together in a blue button-down, his grayish-white yada yada yada. Oh, let's have the fashion statement here. His demeanor, however, indicated that he was nervous. He bounced his left knee and fiddled with a highlighter in one hand as he attempted to cross-examine Special Agent Ryan English, an FBI representative on the witness stand. Um, making English consult the very same pocket-sized copy of the Constitution that he had been seized from him as evidence, Doucette asked pointed questions and hypotheticals about the Seventh Amendment, the right to trial by jury. Does it not say that common law applies? Doucette asked. No, that's a misinterpretation, English replied on the stand. See, that's where we need to understand that it is spelling. They are casting spells. And if you do not know exactly what they mean, you have a misinterpretation. Oh, Doucette answered meekly. I'm sure he answered meekly. Can, can you smell the bias in this article? I know I can. Apparently, he seemed to perk up when he thought of a retort where he said, So if somebody believes that they have a constitutional right to do something, do you believe that they are committing a crime if they believe they are following the Constitution? There's... Uh, could still be criminal intent there, English replied after thinking a moment. Now, wait a minute here. Intent applies to Doucette, but it did not apply to Hillary. What the hell? How can you read criminal intent? Maybe he was not, maybe he did not have criminal intent. Maybe he really was following the Constitution, and you guys are the ones with criminal intent. Oh, it goes on and on and on and on, and it's really very frustrating, and, and mm, I'm just going to let you guys read it. But it really didn't surprise me. When the rule makers adjust the rules, you need to understand that they're going to do that because they can. They are the rule makers. Oh. Yeah, Rob, I know, those esoteric rituals. You know, it's kind of scary. At least you don't have to wear the funky outfits to do those. But I'm just going to let you guys read this because it doesn't surprise me. The sentences surprised hell out of me. But when you stop and think about it is in Colorado, yeah, that doesn't surprise me. So... Wow, it's getting late in the show. I probably ought to get my fanny over to the pig and see what's going on. Because, you know, I won't be here Friday or Saturday or Sunday or Monday. <laughs> or, well, I might be a, no, no, I won't be here Monday either. Um, and I won't be here Tuesday because I'm going to be road tripping, shuttling, doing, well, I'm going to be a busy Grammy. So, 
I better get to the pig, find out at least what happened this date in history. But before I do that, um, yeah, I'm thinking zombified jurors. Oy, in that do set thing. But you know, people are so easily swayed if they, if, and they, that's why they don't teach that in school anymore. Because they don't want you knowing. They don't want you knowing anything, actually. Over here on the pig for the 23rd of May. What's that? <laughs> Boys. Sorry. Uh, word of the day is Boy Scouts. It's a noun. It's actually a phrase, but hey, what the hell. Now defunct, this venerable organization transformed young lads into men for good, commendable character until it was destroyed by progtards who view such men as a threat. Okay. In their quotable quotes section, the appointment of Robert Mueller violates the appointments clause of the Constitution. Mueller is not an inferior appointee, but a principal appointee as understood under our Constitution. His powers are more akin to a, a United States attorney, not an assistant United States attorney. Indeed, Mueller is more powerful than most United States attorneys, all of whom are nominated by the President and confirmed by the Senate as principal officers. Well, thank you, Mark Levine. I mm, could really give a shit less. So, going down to uh, this date in history. 23rd of May, 1618. Wow, they really went back on this one. Cleaning house and throwing out the trash takes a whole new meaning when imperial civil servants are hurled out of the window at Prague Castle. Ooh, that would not be fun. This date in history, the 23rd of May, 1934. Notorious 30s rob bank robbers Bonnie Parker and Clyde Barrow run out of luck when some humor-challenged lawmen mow them down in a hail of hot lead. Well, they went out in a blaze. Uh, this date in history, the 23rd of May, 1935, Major League Baseball decides to road test a bold new concept, its first scheduled night game. Unable to resist, Mother Nature counters with a rainstorm. Booyah, you go, Mother Nature. Yeah, don't you be messing with Mother Nature. She call your shit. And lastly, this date in history, the 23rd of May, 1969. Comedic excellence locked and loaded when BBC orders 13 Monty Python episodes. And the rest, as they say, is history. So or his story, and then society took it for its own and dropped an S. Got the S out of there. So, go on over to the pig. Say hey to Hambo and Porcus for me. Don't necessarily tell them that I sent you, because they, they may slam the door in your face. You never know. These guys are kind of crazy like that sometimes. In any case, um, I think I'm going to close, yeah, with this one. Because I saw you guys discussing it earlier today in the RLM chat. And I thought, wait a minute. That looks like something that's radio worthy. And then I had to take the kids into town and go grocery shopping. Man, they go through milk. In any case, truthin7minutes.com. Weird laws. I know you guys was doing this. Rob Works and Chloe and I don't remember who else because I had to skedaddle because a kid yelled. So, weird laws still in effect in the United States. In Alabama. Oh, I want to go to, I'm going to go to Kansas first just because I want to see what the hell kind of stupidity is going on here. And then I'll go check out Colorado because they're neighbors, don't you know. So, 
in Kansas. Hey, in Kansas, it is illegal to put ice cream on cherry pie. Kiss my ass. Oh my God, I would have been in jail so many times when I worked at A&W because we served cherry pies and uh, apple pies and you could order them a la mode. What the hell? What the hell? In Kansas, it is ill against the law to catch fish with bare hands. <laughs> My brother does it all the time. I'm not telling you which brother. In Salina, it is against the law to leave your car running unattended. That doesn't surprise me. That does not surprise me. There's an awful lot of sneaky sneaks out there that will just take off with it. In Kansas, in Natoma, Kansas, which is around the Salina area, it is illegal to throw knives at men wearing striped suits. Damn it. You can't throw knives at lawyers? Shit. And in Dodge City, of all places, um, all places of business must provide a horse water trough. Yes, you must. Damn it. Now, for Topeka which is the state capital, idiots. No one may scream at a haunted house. Really? Holy shit. Also in Topeka, dead deer may not be hauled across Kansas Avenue. <laughs> Why? Why? Another good one from Topeka. It is forbidden to serve wine in teacups. Oh, yeah. How about this one? In Topeka, snowball fights are illegal. Oh my God, don't tell the kids. They will plow you with snowballs. In Topeka, it is also uh, the installation of bathtubs is prohibited. Hope y'all have showers because, man, tell you what, you drive through Topeka and it is kind of a smelly place. Um, also in Topeka, spitting on sidewalks is expressly forbidden. Or how about this one? No man, no one may whistle or sing on the streets at night. Huh. Huh. Oh, hey, how about Wichita, which is the second largest town in Kansas? One may not swim in pools. No, you just look at it. You lounge and you drown. You may not swim. Or... How about this one? One can be sent to jail for up to a year for making lewd comments over the telephone. Jeez, I am so glad. If you guys listened into any of our family conversations, whoa, I would be in so much trouble. Of course, so would my siblings. But how about Colorado? You know, these wonderful people that right next door to me that we apparently have this wind barrier because I tell you what, you cross out of Kansas into Colorado and either the wind stops or it kicks it into gear. One of the two, but apparently they don't want that wacky weed smell getting over here in Kansas. In any case, <clears throat> in Colorado, it is against the law to raise or permit a dandelion to grow within the city limits of Pueblo. Have you ever been to Pueblo? It's very dry there. In Pueblo, it is against the law to raise or permit a dandelion to grow within the city limits. Didn't you just say that? Also, it is illegal for women wearing a red dress to be out on the streets after 7 p.m. Wow, good things I'm not much of a dress wearer. How about this one? Car dealerships are not allowed to be open for sales on Sundays. That is true, they still are not. Um, in Sterling, it is unlawful to walk under a ladder. It is also unsafe and idiotic, but hey, if you want to tempt Murphy, go for it. It is in Colorado. It is against the law for children over the age of eight to wet the bed. What are you going to do? <laughs> what are you? Wow. Also in Colorado, adultery is illegal. And in Logan, Colorado, it is illegal for a man to kiss a woman while she is asleep. Hmm. Wow. So much for the romance before he wakes you up going, Hey, baby, you wake. 
Want some? <laughs> oh, and then there's Denver. Denver. And Boulder. Oh, my God. Boulder is... Boulder's in some trouble right now. They got a class action lawsuit against them, but that I'll have to find that. Um, in Denver, it is unlawful to lend your vacuum cleaner to a next door neighbor. Apparently, there was a door to door vacuum salesman that was on city council or good buds with a city council person, and that's how that one got passed. Also in Denver, it is illegal to stutter on a Sunday during a church service. Don't go to church. That solves that problem. And in Denver, it is also illegal to mistreat rats. In other words, you have to be kind to the politicians and bosses. In Boulder, Colorado, couches may not be placed on outside porches. Well, where's the fun in that? Also in Boulder, it is legal to challenge a police officer, but only until he or she asks you to stop. <laughs> How did it feel? Did you have fun? Did you enjoy that? Now, put your hands up against the car and spread your legs. You're under arrest. Yeah, that I that's I can see how that would go. Boulder, Colorado, apparently something that went into effect um last week. From what I understand, I was listening to um, oh FM station while I was driving up to see the grandkids, and they were talking about Boulder has passed some kind of ordinance or something to where it is unlawful for you to own a assault weapon, and um, oh, it's a Sleeping Beauty law. Okay. Thanks, Grim. <laughs> In any case, um, you can you can have an assault weapon, and you can keep your clips, but first you have to ask permission from the police, and you have to have expressed written permission from the police in order for you to keep them. But if you do not have that expressed written permission from the police, then your assault weapon. And apparently the, the definition of assault weapon is very vague. I haven't looked it up. I was listening to him talk about it and the, the individual that's bringing a class action suit against them. Um, because, yeah, their, their explanation of what an assault weapon is is vague. You can still keep a shotgun, but you can't have an assault weapon. You can still have this, but you can't... I think you can still have a rifle, but you can't have a... I mean, it's just... It was not making any sense to me whatsoever, but yeah, there's um, quite a few people that are in on this lawsuit challenging the validity of it. And um, there is, Michael Bloomberg has been uh, courting the Boulder City Council. Now, if that, that name rings any bells for you, then you kind of sort of know what's going on here I think they're trying to set precedence is what I think they're trying to do and that's that's what they think as well I'm gonna have to look that up though I don't because they never really did say what the ordinance number was or any of that other fun stuff they were just discussing the legalities and who is involved in the lawsuit and while I was driving it was like I paid some attention but not total attention so but yeah Boulder is Boulder is going to have some fun here in the not too distant future and they know they understand that it's probably going to cost them 12 million in legal fees to fight this but you know they're expecting to get a grant so isn't that wonderful not okay uh, duck 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 goose hey miss Kate I see you came back yay Okay, what other state? I tell you what, Grammy's in New Mexico. Let me go. Oh no, I just went past Florida. Let's check out Florida. In Florida, I only have a few minutes anyway. It's considered an offense to take a shower naked. <laughs> that just okay. And number three, I got to do number three, and then I got to do my. 
It's illegal to fart in public place after 6 p.m. on a Tuesday. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Wow. Florida is overachievers. I mean, I actually have to scroll because it don't all fit on my page. I had to scroll to get to the very bottom. Wow. Um, ooh, Miami. Men may not be seen publicly in any kind of strapless gown. <laughs> you people in Florida. Wow, you's overachievers. That's all I got to tell you. Oh, well. Y'all been listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair here on RealLibertyMedia.com, Channel 3. I will not be here on Friday. Family things going on, and I will not be here Saturday for the dork table. So, no dork table, no rocket chair on Friday. Grimner will be having balls to the wall Friday evening. And, from what I understand, that ponder gander, that Vinny, will be on at 1 o'clock uh, is that 1 o'clock Eastern Time or 1 o'clock Central Time? I'm thinking 1 o'clock Central. Vinny will be on in the afternoon. Check out the RLM <laughs> schedule. <laughs> I used to have it saved in my... Oh, well. I will be back, though, next week, Wednesday, for a regular back to the old grind of doing my Grammy's Rocket Chair on every Wednesday and Friday. But, yeah, got family things going on this weekend. It is a big weekend. It's Memorial Weekend. And everybody keeps saying, you know, you need to do this for the, the military and you need to do that. And how about you just remember your loved ones? And how about you just really, really stop and think that maybe, maybe, maybe what would be a really good way of honoring our uh, military that are no longer with us is to no longer call upon them to do something that would make them no longer be with us. How's that sound? Sounds like an excellent idea to me. Oh, well. Y'all have an absolutely amazing weekend. I know I'm going to. I'll be popping in the chat off and on uh, tomorrow. But other than that, I uh, will catch up with y'all next week. So, until then. Oh, Vinny said, yeah, or Grimmy said, yeah, 1 Eastern. Thank you, Grimmy. Y'all have an absolutely amazing whatever you got coming up. I know I'm going to. And please remember, I truly do love you all, and I wish you all enough. Good night.